everybody. Welcome to our first Talk to the Professional Dukes. I'm Dave Thomas, joined by Buffalo Bill, Dean Marlowe. Dean, how are you, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for taking time. I know a lot's going on with the season getting ready to start. But first of all, I want to offer purple and gold congratulations for a pink celebration of a gender reveal here recently. Congratulations on, on your, yes. your expected child. Yes, thank you so much. It was amazing. Talk about the, the reveal there at the stadium. Where did the idea come from? Uh, my wife, you know, she, she has a, her mind, she has a mind of her, of her own. And, uh, she's like, you know what, our baby is going to be, uh, we found out we got pregnant here. Um, you know, we're going to find out the gender here. We know we might as well have pictures and videos and, and make it a, of something like a, what is a part of our life, you know, like, so she'll know, she'll see pictures of, you know, um, my mom and dad were in Buffalo and they, they found out my gender, uh, and things like that. And you know, I thought it was a really cool idea. The facility uh, was amazing. It was an amazing venue for them. Um, and it just, it was great. It was awesome. Tell us about how you met your wife. Uh, I'm, I met her in Charlotte in 2016. Um, we, we met, we crossed paths in uh, the same apartment complex that we, uh, that we moved into. And uh, it was, I seen her, she seen me, I made the first move and it was all she wrote from there. <laughs> yeah. now, now you're in your third season in buffalo but re referencing charlotte where you played with the carolina panthers your head coach now uh, coach mcdermott was your coordinator in charlotte did that yeah. sort of align the path for you to make the move from carolina to buffalo uh after my injury in 2017 it just uh my, my mind was going a lot of different places um trying to get my body healthy number one and and, you know, uh, Sean reached out to me and he uh, he asked if I was okay. And he said, you know, the number one thing I'm going to do is when you get healthy, I'm going to try to get you here to Buffalo. And um, and now I'm here. I've been here for three years, like he just said. That's got to be a, a cool feeling to know when you're fighting an injury, it's emotional as it is. But then to have oh, yeah. your spirits lifted a little bit like that by that phone call. Um, it, it, had, it did. You know, just you, you lose your confidence a little bit, you know, coming from an injury. and um, it's just like hearing that he reached out to me and having my wife by my side every single time uh, there were hardships and, you know, positive things going on and then back down. It's just like, you know, am I going to find a, find myself on a roster? Am I not? Um, am I going to be a hundred percent when I get back out there? Is my mind going to, so it's a whole bunch of things. And just having Sean reach out to me and saying that it just, it gave me a little bit more motivation to come back even stronger. And, um, I've, you know, I've been good ever since. Now, Coach McDermott is a William & Mary grad. Have you taken opportunity to remind him of JMU's recent success against the Tribe? Oh, yeah, every, every year. <laughs> every year. I, I, I tell Coach, I said, hey, uh, you know, we, this is the battle this week. I, I'll let him know. Sometimes he's off track. Sometimes he's on. Uh, he's like, oh, well, did we win? I said, Coach, no. You got you guys <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, but yeah, we we go back and forth every year. But you know, unfortunately, this year is a little a little tough. So we're not going to be able to to uh, have those conversations like we normally do every year. For sure. Now, now your rookie season, you were in Carolina, and the Panthers go to the Super Bowl. What was that whole week like? Just being in Super Bowl environment. It was it was different. It's just it was a it was a blessing, but it was also, you know, you had to be there mentally for, for a job opportunity and, and, and where you had to treat it the same as a week one season game and the Super Bowl, you had to treat it the same. And it's like, sometimes you can, with all the outside noise, you can get uh, your mind focused on something else. But um, it, it's amazing. I mean, you, we met a lot of good people. Uh, we met Snoop Dogg. He came and talked to the team. We uh, met uh, a lot of, different people in the entertainment industry and um hall of fame players and it's just it's, it's an amazing feeling now you sort of referenced the the transition from carolina to buffalo but walking into a locker room once the bills had acquired you you're going into a brand new locker room where you might know some guys but then odds are you probably don't what was that transition process like for you coming off of an injury uh it's more i was in more in tunnel vision um as much as of a outspoken social guy that I am. Um, I'm not uncomfortable in new situations with new people. I actually like kind of feed off of that because I'm just a, a really uh, social, a big social bug. 
Um, but it was it was a little tough for me at first because I was so focused on myself and knowing that I have to stay healthy on the field. I can't re-injure anything. I I gotta get my body back to where I know it it can be and and it just it was a little difficult I would say. Um, but the guys that are in the locker room, the culture that we have there, everyone's supportive of one another. Everyone keeps keeps each other accountable um, in everything. Um, and it was just, it was amazing just to have the support from the staff and the players and the athletic training staff and just knowing what I was coming back from and how to just keep the maintenance up and just keep me on, on point every day. Now, you've been through training camps before, but never coming out of a pandemic, never with a COVID-19. No OTAs this year, uh, no opportunities to be around the facility. So what was camp like? How was it different for you this year? Because I've read this might have been your best camp in Buffalo. Yeah, so it was it was challenging, man. It was I would probably say it was the most competitive of of, of any training camp. Um, more contact, just because we missed out on preseason games. Uh, we really didn't have the reps that we get the maybe 500 to 700 total reps we get in OTAs in the spring. Um, I would probably say, my coach said the other day, we probably had about 578 defensive snaps total in, in uh, all of training camp. So we're probably down at least maybe another 700 that we would have had if OTAs, you know, were to continue on in the spring. But um, it's it's been it's been different. Uh, just the meal situation is. You know, we get meals shipped from outside places. Uh, just it's it's it, you can't even explain it how different. It's just obviously different, and you just have to you know keep your mind focused on what we're here to do. I mean, our meeting rooms are in a big indoor table, six feet apart, uh, masks on. Uh, just it's just different. But you know, at the end of the day, we're all there together for one common goal, and it's to win. Now, does that put more pressure on you to perform, though, knowing you're not having as many reps and knowing the competition level is higher? Did that put more pressure on you this time around? Uh, no, because I knew I came in prepared. I just – this off season, I had to buy a gym at the house. I had access to a field. You know, I was just taking care of my body, number one thing, because, you know, just the injury, the injury rate is probably going to escalate just because, you know, not like the 2011 lockout things with gyms were still open then like actually gyms were closed like you you weren't able to go work out and I had to buy a gym I had access to a field and you know I I kept myself accountable knowing what I had to do and um I came in with a little bit of anxiety just not knowing how things were going to look and just how schedules are going to be placed I think that's just any human coming into something new they just they want to figure figure things out um, but I actually came in with a lot of confidence knowing that I'm, I'm, I was prepared mentally and physically. What's a game week like? What do you go through from, okay, the time you get up on Monday until you get ready to play on Sunday? Kind of give us an overview of what it's like for Dean Marlowe every week. So so Sunday, obviously, is the game, and then we transition to Mondays. Mondays are our days when we come in and watch film, correct anything that we've, we've done wrong, obviously. And um, we get our lift in for the week, our first lift. Uh, and then Tuesdays, you know, like today is the off day where we don't treat it really like an off day where you just sit on your butt and your home and I kind of come in, get my body moving a little bit, do some rehab. Even though I'm not hurt, I just stay on top of, you know, what I got going on with my uh, my body, my mind, uh, anything. Um, and then, you know, we start practice back on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and then a Friday. And then Friday is when I kind of have that other rehab day to where I do a little bit more stretching and, and massages. And then that Saturday is just, uh, we come in, walk through, and then Sunday it takes off again. I, enjoy so really, I, don't, I don't really think we have a day off if you, you I don't think you, sh we have a day off from practice, but we, we don't have a day off mentally and, uh, and physically. Probably makes it a longer year though, that way, when you, when, when you do get that week off, that bye week, you probably take advantage of it. Yeah, yeah, especially co Coach uh, definitely wants us to be in our best uh, best physique, and he wants us to mentally be fresh, um, kind of wants us to get away from the game a little bit 
and just, you know, reset and refocus. And he does an awesome job with that. I follow you on social media and with all that's been going on in the country, the social unrest, I, I've noticed that you've been very active and you made Buffalo your home. Uh, you and your wife are involved in, in the cleanup there. Uh, I enjoyed some of the things you said, you know, because your parents were both NYPD officers. You understand yeah. their perspective. You also understand the other perspective and you really encouraged everyone to listen more. Tell me about that message and why it was important for you to convey that. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's a crazy time we're living in. Um, it's, it's it's so many things that there's a lot of people who have one perspective on this. There's a lot of people that have a perspective on that. They watch the news, they see social media, they follow friends who live this lifestyle, live that lifestyle. And it's just like, if everyone can just kind of have a little bit of empathy and sympathy to see what everyone's perspective is and, you know, just put yourself in their shoes for one minute, put yourself uh, in someone else's shoes, they can put themselves in your shoes and kind of learn and and see like how they would be affected, how you would be affected. I think everything would be so much better, but unfortunately, um, the world will never have an even scale. It's it's gonna just always be one up, one down. And um, I, I just I just feel like if you have an open mind and you have some empathy and you just you can see what things what's right is what is right and what's wrong is what's wrong um we all do see that and it's just all we can do is just fix it with love that's all we really can do and the more we we, we preach that i think things can slowly change um but yeah i mean that's that's all i got for that i thought that was a powerful message though to say you know yeah. e emphasize love and understanding and that we all we can be different and still live amongst one another. I thought that was very that, important. That, the that's, the, that's the amazing thing about America is just we all are unique, but we can all disagree, but all have love and understanding for one another. Got a two-part question for you about your time at JMU. And I'm gonna start first of all with you, the student. What do you take what did you take away from spending your time at JMU as a student and getting educated there? How did it help you prepare for the real world? Uh, there was obviously, you know, coming in as a freshman, you're taking those gen ed courses of, and you really don't, um, you really don't learn too much about life with the gen ed stuff. It's just more about mentally preparing yourself and organizing yourself. That's what I would take from those gen ed courses. Um, just your, your time management skills and how you organize and things like that. But then once you get into that, like sophomore, junior year, you start taking those courses where you um like I was a sports recreation uh, major and minor in business, so I started taking like uh you know the the kinesiology classes and the hospitality classes and you know just finance and and accounting and econ and all that kind of stuff. And you're like, these are the kind of things that if you want to pursue these careers when you graduate school, you kind of have to take a little bit seriously. Um, but for me, like. I, I told myself, I was like, you know what, I, this is what I want to do for a living is play football. If it doesn't work out, I know I'm a smart guy. I can figure things out, and um, I want to be involved in the sports and hospitality uh, area, and, you know, I can, I can figure those things out. So I took those courses a little bit seriously, and um, I, it just, I think school just prepared me to just, you know, be a really good uh, manager and just on time with things and just well structured and I think that's what college really prepares the students for. I think the average NFL career now is like two and a half years. You're entering your yeah. sixth season so the football of the CAA and the football through JMU, how did that prepare you to make this career that you've made? Oh man like you know we're we're smaller we're a smaller school um, FCS you know we don't get the the same immediate the, the media t uh, attention that the SEC, ACC, and all those, all those schools have. But I just, I don't know. It's just you, you got to know wh where you are at, where you're at in life, whether it be a smaller town, a smaller school, a smaller organization. Like, you have to find a way to separate yourself, and you have to have that mindset to where you're pushed to let people know, and not even just prove other people wrong, but to prove yourself right. And I think that's the mindset that I, I kept a day in and day out. And I'm here. I'm blessed to be in year six, uh, undrafted free agent, which I don't think the odds of that is extremely low. Um, 
And I just, I don't know, I just, I think it's all mindset, all mindset. I remember hearing Mel Kuyper uh, as the draft was approaching. And a guy called in on ESPN radio here locally and asked Mel, the nationwide show, who's a guy I should be watching that I don't know anything about? And he named off three names, and yours was a third of those names. He said, Dean Marlowe will hit you. To, to get that attention, coming from a small school, having that mindset, I think that speaks volumes for what's led you to where you are now. For sure, for sure. And, um, you know, all the, the, I, I've, I love guys that can, that can see, because I've, I've always been, a, I've always been an underdog. And, like, for, for big guys like Mel Kuyper to see that there are, you know, really good safeties in our leagues that aren't big t- are, are at big time schools is, is, a, is, a, is a blessing. And, um, you know, I just, that, and that's how I look at things, too. I mean, you can't always look at what the whole media gives and about this guy, about this guy. But, you know, I do – I've been following this guy. And, you know, I've, I've started four years at JMU, finished with over 300 tackles in my career, uh, 12 or 13 interceptions. I'm not sure which number. I think it was 12 interceptions I finished with. Um, and, you know, I was a guy that, that was a big fish in a small pond. And I stood out. And that was my intention my whole career. Um, never had the, the the offers of the big schools, and you know, just it was amazing for him to to him to say that. Dean, a couple more questions, and we'll let you get back to to your off day, as you said. Uh, <laughs> expectations for the Bills seem to be pretty high this year. In, what can you tell us about what you're hearing inside this locker room or from this coaching staff about what you guys expect to accomplish this year? So, so this year is like you know our our main goal is to win the win the AFC East, and when we when we win the the AFC East, the next step is to be playoff caliber, and that's the thing that we preach in the locker room is to, and everything you do is a daily standard is to be playoff caliber, and um, that's where it starts. And then you know obviously every team's uh, big goal is to win that and raise that uh, Lombardi Trophy, and you know we keep that as a daily mindset and and for motivation and um. It's just we 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 preach so many things, but at the end of the day, it all comes down to doing your 111th, as we say here, and just doing your job, not trying to do someone else's job. One person doing one thing, not 11 people trying to do 11 different things, and it's just like it's 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 a mess like that. And um, I forgot what Coach really says. He says one person doing uh. One person doing I, – I can't remember the, the phrase that he actually says, but it's, it makes a lot of sense. Um, but, I, I mean, just being here in Buffalo and the culture that's built and the players that are here and the coaching staff, it's, it's very family-oriented. And, um, you know, we know that we can't do it without, without each other. And you take that first step week one of winning the East – against the Jets and a former teammate of yours and Daniel Brown. What's the focus against the Jets and what's it like to be on the, on the opposing sideline for some of the guys you went to college with? <laughs> yeah. I mean, our, our mindset and our, and our daily standard this week is just, you know, do everything we can. Don't beat ourselves. Um, you know, obviously we're going up against a great opponent in uh, the New York Jets and, um, you know, just don't do anything out the normal, just do us and be us and everything will take care of itself. And I actually spoke to uh, Daniel yesterday and I said, I said, how's everything going? I'll see you Sunday. And he said, well done. <laughs> <laughs> well, we look forward to watching that game. You know, JMU Nation will have a, a keen eye on that one. I want to say congratulations again on your career, on the, the impending birth of your child and your, your recent marriage. And wish you the best of luck this season. And we thank you for taking time to join us here today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.